How's it going YouTube? This is Ben from Gruber's Tropical Fish and you are watching a video on seahorses, seahorse information, seahorse care. First thing that people think when they think of raising seahorses, keeping them at their houses, man this must be really hard or difficult or even impossible. You know you only see them at aquariums, um, large aquariums downtown. Well, this just isn't true with all the latest technologies that have been developed in the past five, ten years. It, it actually has become quite easy to raise seahorses in your tank. You just need to um, have the unique conditions that are appropriate for seahorses that are different from some other fish. For instance, seahorses like a relative fast flow rate, about ten times to twenty times per hour. That, when I say that I mean volume of water, so 10 times the volume of your tank to 20 times the volume of your tank per hour. Now with the flow rate you need to make sure you cover your intakes and your outflows to prevent the seahorses from being sucked into them because as you might know seahorses are fairly slow swimmers and so it's hard for them to avoid uh, intakes and outflows. Um, because they're slow swimmers, it takes them a long time to eat, and so you can't keep them with fast fish, and that's one of the issues people find with seahorses. You need to be very careful about what fish you put them with. In your tank, when you're setting it up, they do, like I said, need uh, fast flow rates of water, but they also need some shelter to provide them an area to rest from the um, high rate of flow that they often swim through. Also, uh, seahorses can fight off some bacterial infections, but there are many that they can't fight off. So it's best to keep the temperature of the water below 74 degrees to try to limit some of the bacteria in the tank. And this is another reason why you're kind of limited on what fish you can keep with the seahorses because of the temperature. When you're also setting up the tank, you need to make sure that the sea horses have plenty of hitching posts that they can put their tails on. Um, hitching posts could include branching corals, artificial branching corals, plastic and silk plants, brightly colored poly rope, macroalgae like um, calerpa. Um, the greater the variety, the better. And also, seahorses do like some live rock. And one great live rock that I love to put in tanks is Tonga branch rock. Because, um, like its name suggests, it provides some hitching posts for the seahorses, but it's also live rock. Seahorses, we found, can do very well in nano cubes, so it's nice to keep them in smaller tanks or in larger tanks. When feeding them, though, they are found to be pretty messy eaters and they can give off uh, poops that are high in protein and fat so you need to make sure you watch your water quality closely and they need an efficient nutrient export system meaning uh, a system that takes away waste before it breaks down uh, you need to have this to make sure that the nitrates and other chemicals don't build up in your system so to do this get protein skimmers or refugium, macroalgae, nutrient absorbing pads um, as well as doing frequent small water changes. Now, a very important thing about keeping seahorses is that you start off with a healthy seahorse. That's very important. Now, here are some things to avoid and to look for when you get seahorses. Um, one, you need to make sure you're getting them from a reputable dealer. Um, also, to look for some of these uh, conditions on their body, like cloudy eyes or a dead stare, which basically means no eye movement, uh, caved in sides, hollow looking plates, white, gray, or inflamed growths. Um, algae growth is normal, however. Heavy breathing, panting, or coughing. Um, they are slightly heavier breathers than other fish, but they will start to rock back and forth from breathing too hard. So make sure you watch for that and bloating. So make sure you look for all those.